educating investors. The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray, feeling good, Lewis. Well, we're going to start the show just a tiny bit differently. Each day when I do these shows, I try to do something a little different. And this morning, I got a really cool email from Mr. Hector Castillo down in Del Mar, California, where the surf meets the turf, where Bing Crosby and Jimmy Durante started Del Mar Racetrack. Oh, way back in the 1920s or 30s, and uh, it's been one of the most beautiful places to go to watch the races uh, in California. Well, Hector and his lovely wife went there last Saturday, and she happened to pick a couple of horses in the uh, third race. I marked them up. You'll be able to see here one horse was 44 to 1. The other horse was 45 to 1. And you'll see the horse right below that was the favorite, and he was off at less than a dollar. So if you bet the favorite, you got 80 cents back on your money. But if you bet one of those other horses, you got one heck of a payoff. And if you look down here at the bottom, uh, her payoff, she bet a $5 exacta box, which cost her $10, and it paid 870 to 1. Now, that's a little better than even money that that favorite paid, but that's what happened. She got paid a lot of money, so I was happy to see them send that. The names of the horses, of course, was Bear Mountain, and uh, she bet them only because of being a long shot. So the De La Luna, which was the, the Day of the Moon, which was the second horse at 45 to 1, that's it. By the way, just for historical purposes, the biggest payoff ever in California racing uh, for a for an exacta, for a five dollar exacta, was a horse called Royal Impact at sixty to one, and the horse in second place was ninety to one, called Adunas. The Royal Impact Adunas, the twelve four exacta, paid twelve thousand seven hundred and fifty dollars. And who had it, Mr. Eddie? Fast Eddie Horwitz. I didn't have it because I didn't want to spend 10 bucks, but he had it, and that was back in 1973. Now, the reason why I'm bringing this to your attention is he asked a question about, you know, when you go to the racetrack, the, the first thing the track does is they take 16 and two-thirds percent right off the top. That means that almost everybody going to the track is there for uh, – uh, donations and entertainment. They're not going to make any money. Usually probably 10% or less, less than 10% of the people will make money. But as you, as you see the races unfold during the day, people that are losing will start betting on long shots. And that means that the favorites that are in the race will be priced at a different price. So if you bet and you go to the races and you just want to break even and have a little fun, wait till the seventh, eighth, and ninth races, the last three races of the day, and find a horse that is the favorite in the race. Usually he's around two to one or three to one, but he won't be two to one or three to one because of the people betting on the long shots. They'll make that favorite. Uh, he'll be paid maybe four, five, even six, sometimes seven to one. And so if you bet that horse, he has a chance of showing 85% of the time. In other words, he finishes first, second, or third 85% of the time, and that'll cover your expenses for the day. And you might get lucky, like Hector's wife. Hector never told me whether he got to keep any of it or not. Hmm. I think I have some experience in that, but that's, look. Now, I wanted to go through one other thing. There's a little, little longer story to this, and, you know, one of the reasons I love doing this show is I get to share some of these stories. I've told them before, but some of them are so very vivid and, and important to me. I want to tell this one again. You'll notice that these two horses were 45 to 1 and 44 to 1. And my very first experience with the track was in 1972 with Eddie Horowitz, and uh, hold on just a minute. Hold on. And Cy, uh, who is the um, the former um, um, sh former um, gosh darn, he was at, not an admiral. He was a lieutenant colonel uh, in the army, and uh, he was also a good friend of Jack Warner. And Jack Warner was there, and we were setting at the track, and uh, it was the very first race. And I happened to be sitting next to Jack Warner because Eddie and Cy were sitting right behind me. And uh, I was looking at this horse at 90 to 1 called Guide Tour. 
And uh, I said, I like this horse. Looks how pretty he is. You know, I don't know. If you know, I still don't know anything about horses. And uh, and so I said, why don't you just throw your six dollars at Win Place and Show Bet out on the track and let the birds pick it up? He said they have no chance of that horse winning. And Jack Warner looked at me and he said, Kid, he said, you see those horses out there? I said, Yeah. He says, There's not one freaking one of them that knows how to read. He th- far as he knows, he thinks he's man of war. And of course, Guide Tour happened to win that day, and I got back 780 bucks, I believe, for my $6 bet. And uh, I always remembered that, that those horses can't read. So that's the main thing. But if you have a hunch on something, you know, it's better to, you know, to, to get paid off at eight or nine or 10 to one than to get paid off at a, you know, betting on $2 or something like that. Like Secretariat won a lot, but he only paid 210, 210, 210. So if you bet $2 on him, you only got $2.10 back. You know, so that's the main reason. You got to find out why it's there. I, there's a there's a method to my madness, boys and girls. Stay with me. I'm going to show you the next chart. Okay, this comes uh, directly from the newsletter. Let's get this up here because we were talking about this uh, as the, one of the features this week was the move that we were looking at potentially in the crude oil. Let's get this up here so we'll be able to see it here. This is the daily chart on crude. Now, it's been updated uh, through today because you can see uh, we had traded up to 91, but the 61% retracement on that ABCD pattern came in at 87.35. The low was 87.01. Now, if you read the newsletter, and if you read the newsletter 24-7, I think you'll be really surprised what really happened because in the newsletter, what we said was, and I'll get this up here to take a look at it. You'll be able to see it just one second. There we come up here with a little half hour chart. So we'll be able to see it over the last few days. We'll be able to see all of these beautiful ABCD patterns. Now, these are not 870 to 1, folks, but the payoff is pretty good. As you can see here, we had the big ABCD. There it was right there. 87.35, low was 87.01, and we said in the newsletter, watch for a rally to the 382 at, are you ready for this, boys and girls, 92.64 in print, take a look at it, you won't believe it, and the high was 92.65. Uh Uh-oh, we missed it by one tick, so that one didn't count. As you can see, uh, this was updated about an hour or so ago. We've already broken $3,300 in the last hour and a half from that. Now, that's nothing like a payoff on a $5 exacta bet, but that's still, you know, a pretty good uh, pretty good payoff. But you can see the beautiful ABCD patterns that were forming there. They don't always work that way. But remember now, if this is a true B- BC swing there at 92.64, that means that we're going to ni- uh, $78, I believe. $78 is the ABCD structure on that. And that's a that's a, that's half the price of where we were back in March, so maybe that war over there uh, is going to be uh, ending sooner than what we had thought. So I hope that pays uh, some, uh, you know, helps you to realize that what's going on. I want to show a couple other of these because we're looking at our, our guest today is Shane Smolian, thewolftrader.com. Tomorrow we got an open day. I've got some information I want to share with you tomorrow. And then uh, Wednesday, uh, Thursday, we've got Stan Harley. And do not miss Friday, folks. Well, don't miss Thursday either, but Peter Lighty's on Saturday, uh, sorry, <laughs> Friday, 877-927-6648. of booming inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve and a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ.
Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN. Educating Investors. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, we're back, folks, and I believe we have Bob from Spokane, Washington, on the line. Bob, are you there? Oh, good morning, Larry. Welcome back. Ah, it's good to be back, my friend. What can I do for you today, Bob? Well, I'm glad to hear all these stories about the race. <laughs> Grandfather was a large shareholder in the California Jockey Club, which uh, owns oh my uh, Bay Meadows, Santa Anita, and Hollywood you, Park. And I remember I, as a child going uh, to shareholder meetings. That's how oh it all my started God, that for was, me. You, so. you, you ran into some famous people in those days, I'll tell you. I did. I did yeah. back then. But it was fun. Anyway, thanks for all those stories. And my question today is regarding Trader Tom. Did he give you any insight as to where what he thinks? Thinks right now of Bitcoin or Ethereum here. He he has no feeling about uh, cryptocurrencies, and and worse than that, he has no interest in it at all. He really it, it's uh, he he just he doesn't block it out. He just has no interest in it at all. As a matter of fact, he happens to be in an island off the uh, coast of Spain here for the next month with his family, <laughs> just to show you what success will do for you. He took twenty two people of his family first class for a whole month there and he rented a nine bedroom mansion with servants and you know cooks oh, and the whole yeah. bit for the whole the whole month so he's he's living the life of Riley right now and Riley's paying the bills so but he has no interest in the cryptos I've talked to him and I I know very little about him myself but he he does yeah. so well just with flat trading that he just he just doesn't want to go to an area that he doesn't understand and as you know Bob, uh, cryptos are probably next to brain surgery and uh, cardiac surgery. It, it's pretty tough because there's so many things that can go wrong. You know, it's just uh, so I, I, I have, you know, John Jameson is a source I use who's really good at this stuff. But, you know, I don't know very much about it. So I can see the chart here. To me, that's just a little dead cat bounce that we've seen from 18,000 up to 23,000, 24,000, whatever it is. I mean, that to me is it should have really taken off a lot more if it was a major bottom and we've got that major ABCD staring us in the face at 12,000 so that's uh, that's what I think is going to where it's so, headed towards anyway 
So put the brakes on until twelve thousand, and then reevaluate. It would be my yeah, suggestion. reevaluate. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say buy something for twelve thousand. Go yeah, down and sure. look at one of the other cryptocurrencies that you know we've looked at in the past, like uh, Cardano ADA. You know, we we recommended that at six cents. It went to three dollars. It's at fifty three cents today. If that gets to fifteen or twenty cents, you can only lose fifteen or twenty cents. You know, stop the train, get on it. That's like buying a two. Uh, you know, forty to one shots at Del Mar. You know, you might get, yeah. you might hit it pretty good. You know. Yep, yep, for sure. Well, thank you very much, and once again, welcome back. It's good to have you back. Well, thank you. It's good to be back. It really is. You know, I, I, I enjoy when I when I got that uh, really cool email from um, Hector uh, last night. I looked at that and I said, "Oh, I was thinking of something to talk about." And I said, "Gee, I brought back so many memories that I said I, I have to talk about." We used to rent a house there. During the time when I was at Drexel, we would rent a house for the whole month uh, down at Del Mar. Uh, you know, not on the beach, but really close to the beach. And the kids would go, and then we would go and play the races, and then go out to dinner at night. We it was really just uh, really a lot of fun. But uh, those are old days. You know, those are gone. <laughs> those are gone. Yeah. yeah. Well, anyway, good talking with you, and hi to yes. Sarah, and uh, we'll be I speaking will. again. Thanks a lot, Bob. Thanks for calling right. in. You bet. Bye-bye. Okay, now let's take a look here. I posted the chart of that uh, E-mini S&P from yesterday, and I wanted to just give you, because we, since we talk about the races and stuff like that, the races are no different than the than the, the futures and stuff, folks. The reason why is it's all numbers. I mean, the racetracks, all these sports, everything is, is based on numbers. How many yards a, uh, a ball carrier can catch, how far he can throw the ball, all that stuff is related to numbers, and we're doing the same thing here. Yesterday, this is what we were looking at. If you remember, I said, watch that 382 retracement that we had there. Remember, this big high up here, that was the large ABCD, you know, on the long term going back to June 24th. That measured to double double measurements between 41.78 and 41.90, and it got to 41.88.75. And of course, you can see after that 3.82, we've uh, been trending down, but nothing, you know, really, uh, you know, really dramatic. Now, someone asked me to comment about uh, Kathy Wood and uh, Arc Trading and stuff like that, folks. I don't know anything about her. Uh, I know that she's got to do with technical stuff, but I know she's had a pretty rough run this past six or eight months or year, whatever it was. But before that, she was, you know, she was golden, and that happens to all of us in this business. But I don't know anything about her, uh, so I don't want to make any comment. And even if I did, I wouldn't make a bad comment because, you know, we all go through periods of, you know, being good and being bad, and you just gotta you gotta learn to live with it. That's. Uh, that's the, the main thing. I did want to share, before we have Shane on, I want to share you one of my very favorite um, horror stories. It goes back to when I was a little shaver, uh, eight years old, my grandpa. Uh, we were living there in uh, Clinton, Indiana, right outside of Terre Haute, where I was born. And he said, come on, son. He says, we're getting ready to go to New York. And he said, we're going to go to the races. And I'd been to the Kentucky Derby with him, but I'd never been to New York. And so we had a, he, had a, he had a 36 Ford pickup, and we slept in the back of the pickup. We drove all the way to Saratoga, New York. And um, we went to see they were having a horse was being shown. His name was Man of War. Man of War only lost one time in his whole career, and that was at Saratoga Racetrack. And he was upset by a horse named Upset at 99 to 1. Anyway, we went there to see him. They paraded him around. He ran around the track. He was, uh, he was about 29 years old at the time. But the reason why we went to Saratoga is we had relatives there because the family came from Italy. And they were coal miners, and they, they uh, first settled in Saratoga, then later on in southern Indiana where the coal mines were. But that's where we went to visit uh, friends and stuff like that. It was a good four-day trip, but uh, I uh, always remembered. I'd love to have that old pickup truck back, but those days are since uh, long gone. Anyway, that's another one that I want wanted to share with you here uh, also there uh, we want to talk about the gold market folks because for the first time in quite a while we're seeing something where we might and I'm saying might this is a big might we might be making some type of a little top here uh, in this gold market and uh, the reason why I say that is if you look at uh, all of the ABCD patterns that are here you see the big uh, bottom that was made there's the pullback you know just like we said in the crude oil buy that first 3A2 pullback 
and uh, boom, away it went. But anyway, you can see we have a three drive pattern forming up here at this 18, uh, 17, 18, 19 area. So watch that really closely because we've come a long way, folks. We're up 130 bucks from the bottom. And, you know, look at the corrections. We've had two $30 corrections, which are pretty much spot on to the harmonic number in gold. So let's uh, let's remind ourselves that that's where we stand. By the way, uh, thanks for listening to the stories that I have. I try to tell as many as I can. And the ones that I can't remember, I make them up. No, I don't do that. Anyway, let's uh, wait on for just a few moments. And we're going to have, in four minutes, we're going to have Shane Smolian, wolftrader.com sharing some of his ideas of where he thinks the markets are going. Tomorrow is an open day. I will have, either I'll have a guest or some special stuff tomorrow. Thursday, Stan Harley. Friday, Peter Lightings. We'll be right back with Shane Spoley and WolfTrader.com. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text, either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back online, folks, with uh, Shane Smolian, the WolfTrader.com. And Shane, we have a caller from Southern California. Mike, are you there? Hi, Larry. Hi, Shane. Nice to talk to you guys this morning. What do you got on your mind, my friend? I wishing Larry a happy birthday. We missed it when he was oh, out. Oh, yeah, but, yeah. Uh, I was born, oh, on, yes. I was born yeah. on the same day as Ralph Elliott, July 28th. But I don't count my birthdays. I haven't counted those since uh, 1976. I give them to people that are 20 years old so they can start drinking a year early. So that's what <laughs> oh, I've been okay. doing that's all these wonderful. years. That's a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> so you have uh, Tesla on I, your mind? What do you, what do you want to know about Tesla? Well, what do you, where do you guys think it's going? I brought, brought the, I have the big chart out here, 
Mm-hmm. And the long term, it looks like it's in a consolidation or pullback. Where do you think it's headed from here? Well, we have a lot of resistance up here at this close to a thousand dollars a share. I don't know how high it got today, but I know what a thousand dollars it has. But you know, you can't bet against uh, betting against a Tesla is like betting against Shane Smolian. You do not want to <laughs> do that. That's all I can give you for <laughs> advice, Mike. Well, I, I, I just like to thank you guys for all you do, and Shane, I I love your work too, and um, look forward to hearing from you. Thanks Thank a lot, you. Mike, and I'll get that 20 bucks in the mail to you just as soon as I collect it at the track, okay? All right, Larry, sounds good. Thank you. <laughs> okay, Shane, go ahead, my friend. How you doing, Larry? Good to, good to see you back. Yeah, living the dream, baby, on the green side of the grass one more time. Wonderful. All right, um, so I want to start out with some key points of focus here. Uh, just some things just to kind of lay the groundwork here. Number one, the S&P is not out of the woods, so... Sorry, people. I know it looks pretty good here with this little rally we've had, but we are not anywhere close to being out of this bear market. Um, S&P gold, Bitcoin likely to all decline together on the next leg down. So when this next leg down comes in the bear market, I think they're all going to go down together. Uh, That's what happened during COVID. I think it's going to happen again. Now, gold is in trouble. It's in a seasonal rally right now. If we get to that, it's at the end of the presentation. I'll get to that. Uh, But the first whiff of inflation slowing down is likely to cause a collapse. Now, we saw gold during this big inflation run of COVID, and it didn't do so hot. And so now it's in this decline. And and I'm I'm of the opinion, based upon multiple cycles, that gold has a long way to go here to the downside. Uh, And natural gas, I would keep an eye on that, guys, because the fall is coming. We're just a couple months away from the fall, and Europe has a big problem, okay, with the Ukraine-Russia situation. So... Those are some some key points of focus just I wanted to lay out. But uh, I, I also want to lay out some key seasonals here just to t- touch on multiple markets just to kind of uh, let everybody know what we should be seeing. Uh, so first of all, gold gold is at a seasonal peak. This is its strongest period from uh, late July to early September. So it should be rallying based off of uh, what it's doing. It looks pretty weak to me. Uh, and, and the larger term cycles, I have them, you know, when we're talking about 12 year, 29 year, I have all of these headed lower. They're just topping now and rolling lower. So I'll watch for gold, watch for a peak in gold. Uh, the grains and the natural gas peak in mid-September typically, uh, but the Russia m- situation might shift that natural gas. It might keep going. Oil, same thing, peaking in October, but the Russia, you know, oil is hitting a low today in the seasonal pattern, but Russia may shift it. Um, and it could shift either. It could shift either way, guys. I mean, <coughs> Larry, if like what you said, if the war ends early, I mean that could shift it too. But uh, if the war, could, if things persist as they are, uh, likely it could cause it to run up. Uh, bonds have a downward seasonal through December. Bitcoin is down. Uh, Bitcoin just had a major uh, cycle high that just came in on the last few days, and then S and P bottoms in September, October. I'll get into that. That's dealing with the election cycle. So we're going to talk a little bit about the election and how that affects the S and P because some people have been asking me about that. And it's a little more complicated because we're in a tightening phase and we're in, we're in a technical recession. So I'll do my best to answer all those questions. But first of all, inflation. This was a headline yesterday. Consumers expect uh, expect inflation to slow down, which is a big win for the Fed. Uh, I'm not sure how to interpret that. If, the opinion of consumers really means anything, uh, but it is an interesting headline here. I do think we are getting a cool down in commodities. I'm going to show you some evidence of that. But the problem with the inflation is that uh, the inflation we have uh, other areas that are sticky. So commodities are starting to cool off. It is true. Uh, I do think the Fed's policies are going to be able to cool off some of these commodities. But when you have areas like rent, housing, the housing market, grains being affected by Ukraine, you have droughts, natural gas with the Russia situation. Medical care is not coming down. Eating out is up. Public transportation is up 23%. These are very sticky areas, so these are likely to, to be remain elevated. And plus natural gas. You have to remember, when we offered Europe help, the EU help, that caused our natural gas markets to spike. So there's all, there's these other areas that are they're really kind of out of the control of the Fed right now. There's also staffing shortages, food shortages. I, I mean, I notice in the grocery store now, like when I go to get potatoes, they're, 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 they're not there. Uh, they might be there in bags, the little ones, but the big ones aren't coming. I talk to the managers and they're like, we're just not getting stuff. Uh, it, and that's in some, you know, all different types of, of chains I've been seeing this. 
Um, I think it's likely to cool down, but not to the 2 to 4% target. And then, of course, outside factors, guys, there's hurricanes that can come up through the Gulf that can spike oil. Ukraine, outside of the control of the Fed, you know, remember there, there's rumors of they're, they're burning down whole fields and they're missing whole planting seasons. Uh, so you have the wheat situation, which is controlled by Russia, China, and India, 40%. Uh, stimulus could come in if they cut more stimulus checks that could cause inflation there, there's a drought going on which could cause the price of meat and hogs to go up uh, and then the supply chain so there are things it, it's what I'm saying is it's not a it's not a uniform market like it was before and there's certain areas that are likely to stick and because I don't think it can get down to that two to four percent I don't think we're going to have another round of QE anytime soon and I think the Fed is going to likely continue this tightening phase now what I want to show you here these are trades of multiple markets so this is not just uh one like smp or something this is looking at about 20 different commodity markets financials bonds these were trades and the, and the long trades were actually doing were dominating and then all of a sudden when we hit may to june the long trades stopped working and all of a sudden the short trades start working and to me this is a sign that the bear market is starting to become entrenched across multiple markets so uh, that's an interesting shift i noticed that so again, S&P is on this little bounce here, but if you look at all of the markets together, we are starting to see uh, more of a short uh, short bias now on the market. So I think that the, the bear market is now finding its way and the, the inflation is starting to cool a little bit. Now S&P here, let's talk about the elections. So people ask me this all the time, can the S&P rally into the elections? So what I would like to do, instead of just put in put in a statement out like that let's talk about how these markets behave so we know that usually before elections there's a lot of uncertainty and the markets are usually flat they don't really go anywhere before the midterms until we get to about mid-september to october now some of the reason why reasons why people think this happens is because they the polling becomes more concrete at this point and so people feel more certain about hey it's going to go this way or this way and so typically that's when we expect a low based upon these electional years. Now, typically, I'm not saying this is going to happen this time, but typically the rally continues through the elections. And then in year three of the presidential cycle, that is the strongest year. So next year is the strongest year of the presidential cycle. And that rally typically goes through April. Now, we have other situations going on right now. Obviously, we have some things that could be different. So let me talk about why this could be different. The Fed is tightening. That's likely to continue. I don't see that stopping. Um, I don't consider rate pot. Uh, we'll, get, we'll get to this when we get back. Be right back, folks. Shane Smoy and WolfTrader.com. This coming Wednesday, August 10th, Basil Chapman will be hosting an all-day live webinar from 9 a.m. till 2 p.m. Eastern Time, where he'll be presenting the technical tools based on the Chapman Wave methodology, a full in-depth course on his entire trading system. Over the five hours of live education, Basil will discuss studying and practicing entry and exit points, assessing where to add or subtract from positions, utilizing simple technical tools for holding positions longer, taking bear charts and adding notations, tools, and patterns, as well as identifying three core formations that repeat in every time frame, and much more. When you sign up, you get a chart booklet emailed to you immediately to start studying, and you gain access to his daily newsletter, The Opening Call, a $149 value. The cost to attend is only $295, and the full five hours will be archived. Don't miss this live special event Wednesday, August 10th with Basil Chapman. For all the details and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com right now. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. 
You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Okay, we're back, folks, talking with Shane Smoley and WolfTrader.com. Can you continue, young man? Sure. So why could it be different this time with the, the election cycle? Well, a couple of things. The Fed is tightening, and I think there's already certainty. I think we kind of know what's going to happen there. The polls are, are very one-sided. You know, it's one-sided to the GOP. So I think there might already be certainty. Uh, we're in a bear market, and then there's a technical recession. The yield curves are inverted. I know that that, that jobs number was positive, but, I mean, technically, it's always happened when that's occurred. I mean, the only thing you could say is, Hey, we're coming out of COVID. This is a different situation, but uh, we'll we'll get to that. So the S&P summary. So we're still in this expanding corrective flag pattern. Uh, the August Astro is negative, and the worst part is late in the month and then early September. And then again, this election cycle suggests a low in September, October. The Fed's continuing the tightening, uh, and, the, and the economic contraction continues, and the global contraction continues, and there's an inversion of yield rates. And I think you talked about that yesterday with your guests. So these are, these are very strong indications that there's very strong indications that we are in a, in a recession. Uh, and then this increase in the labor force might actually be a bad sign because people weren't working and they're being forced back into the labor force. So it might not it might just be that because the conditions are getting worse, they're forced back in. They got that got kind of shifted with COVID. And then, of course, the big thing here, guys, the Fed juice and the Fed internals are still in a cell. Uh, I do look at these daily statistics for the S&P. Uh, today is, is a relatively positive day. Uh, Wednesday is, is, is a worse day, and then Thursday, Friday are typically strong, and then Monday is coming in as your weekday. So watch the S&P over the weekend. It tends to track with Bitcoin, and uh, if Bitcoin's faltering over the weekend, it can also drag the S&P down. So I, I always put a high risk on Mondays as a potential gap down day because Bitcoin trades over the weekend. It can cause it to trade in sympathy. So I'm always really careful about any long trades that we take over the weekend. Now this next chart is an intraday of the S&P. This is the correction here, and we have some type of an expanding wedge. Now no matter how you want to count this, it's expanding, uh, and these types, of these types of corrective patterns are very dangerous because they draw a lot of people in. And then also on this wedge up here, on this expanding part, there's a little part of it that's actually contracting, and so that actually, we actually just kind of hit that time contraction on that now a lot of times when you get these contracting wedges you get a violent move to the downside but this s p seems to be taking its time i, mean, I think the main thing here is that when we look at all of these rallies they all have retraced in very quick order here and i don't think this one's going to be any different i think we're going to be headed back lower here and i think the quantitative tightening is going to take effect here uh, i do want to point out something here this is a chart showing the fed internals here uh, ultimately, we are heading lower on these internals as quantitative tightening starts. I, I do have a little—I have a little cycle down here that I started running. This is the—I call this the Fed internals biorhythm. This is rolling over now and heading down until about August the 19th. So I think we have a chance here for this S&P to be showing some signs of topping here. 
I have multiple signals coming in here. Now the pink signal here is the optimized Bradley. The green signal is the double lunar and the black one is the planetary speed. So what this means when we get a clustering like this, a lot of times that tends to, to do a better job at marking these uh, turning points in the market. So I think that the S&P is definitely, uh, definitely vulnerable here to, to go in lower here. So a uh, couple other things I'm going to look at here. The gold miners uh, is still kind of pushing up here. It's, it's in this little corrective rally, but it's relatively weak. You can see that the miners have been weak compared to gold. Uh, and so I think this is likely to end around September the 1st. I think that's that's when these uh, gold type of stocks and gold bullion are going to start to roll over. Now, the VIX is an interesting one, too, because this has been laying on its belly, too, for a long, long time. This is a really, really low pattern here. And typically what we'd want to see at a market low, we'd want to see the VIX spiking. So we haven't seen that yet. So I, I'm I'm kind of waiting for that to happen. Now, somebody asked about ARK Innovations. This is an interesting pattern here. Uh, ARK Innovations, the Fed juice has been in the cell since February the 10th. But you can see here that uh, there's a there's an 11 wave corrective pattern going on here, guys. That's super rare. And that's the maximum amount of corrective waves that something can make uh, in a pattern. Uh, and if you're looking at like an Elliott wave type pattern, 11 waves is called a, is called a, a triple three. Uh, it's super rare. And so that's not a good sign. And then we also have these bigger cycles rolling over with Bitcoin. So I kind of look at RK and Bitcoin. Uh, th they tend to trade in, in sympathy. So those are just some rundown of the S&P and some stocks. Now, gold is an interesting one here. So last time before I came, I was going to come on the show last time. This was the chart that we had. I said, you know, for gold, it's really do or die time. This is going back to the beginning of July. Uh, and you can see here, that gold has this uh, solar cycle. This is the orange pattern here. This is the solar cycle here. And so, you know, I was saying gold really has to get going here at this point. And so we were at the low of this solar cycle. This was back in early July. I said it really needs to get going here because once we hit the end of August or the end of or at the end of August, basically, that's the end of the run for the gold cycle. And you can see here on the chart that gold has really Gold has had a relatively muted rally, so I expected gold to try to do something here uh, between August, you know, this August period, that's when gold gets strong. So I expected this to to try to get strong. I mean, it was showing signs that it was really in trouble here. But again, once we hit this topping period into here, I think gold's going to be in trouble. And again, it, once we start to see any cooling of inflation, I think gold's really going to have issues because gold does not do well in deflationary periods. Uh, it's supposed to be this inflation hedge, so I think it's going to start rolling over. And I think once that next leg of that bear market gets started, we got to look. I, I'm look. What I'm looking for is when Bitcoin, gold, and S and P start going down in sympathy, and I think that will kind of give us a, a, a measuring point of the next leg of the bear. Like how, like we're kind of in the center of the next leg down on this bear market, and so that's something I'm really watching with great interest here. So gold is gold is in focus here. Uh, and again, it should be rallying right now on this short-term rally. But long-term, uh, I had talked about this before. There was a divergence on gold uh, that I talked about. This divergence goes all the way back to 2008, uh, and you get you got to get down to this like 1100 to 1000 level. I think that's where we're going, and I think it's going to take us a few years to get there. Uh, I think once we get to this level into here, I think gold's going to going to base pretty well, and I think it's going to set up for a nice trade you know, could could be another five to 10 years. But I think the next few years here, gold's going to be working its way lower here as it tries to figure out like what it is, like what is its identity? The, you know, the identity of gold has changed so much since the arrival of quantitative easing and printing of money. The Fed has basically said, we don't need gold. I, I know we went off the standard, but quantitative easing took it to a whole nother level. Uh, and then the arrival of Bitcoin really changed what, so what is gold? You know, like gold's kind of in an identity crisis right now. And I think it's going to have a few years here where it's trying to figure that process out. And I talked about this before that we have, you know, some of these cycles. We have this long-term Jupiter cycle coming up on gold. And gold, you know, this is where we are right now. And so uh, this peak right here, this triple peak, we're coming off of this now. And this really falls until 2025. This is the Jupiter cycle. And then there's a Saturn cycle that will go even further. So you know, it can it can bottom before some of these lows, but the the question is when will it bottom? Uh, and I think 
you know, the more you put these cycles together, you know, you put the divergence together, you put the Jupiter cycle together, you put the Saturn cycle together, you put the annual cycle together, you start putting all this together, they're all kind of pointing down. Wow, very good, very good. You're going to have to uh, bring these cycles in more than 10 years, pal, because on my <laughs> on my clock, I, I don't think I got 10 left. So let's try to keep them to two years, okay? <laughs> sure. <laughs> now, hey, stay with us, folks. Shane Smoley at WolfTrader.com. I want to let the folks know how they can reach you, Shane. We'll be right back, folks. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Hello. Hello? All right, folks. So I'm, I'm hearing that we lost Larry's uh, Skype connection. So I'm going to go ahead and keep talking here, assuming that everybody can hear me. 
And I'll just finish out with uh, this segment on Bitcoin. So I meant to talk about S&P gold and Bitcoin today, but this is Bitcoin. I do feel that Bitcoin is, is in trouble here. Uh, Bitcoin's coming up to a major cycle high. And I showed you in that RK Innovation uh, graph that there was 11 waves of a corrective pattern. Bitcoin just makes, makes this uh, double lunar cycle high on the, the fifth. We also have a cycle called the hottest cycle that looks at long-term cycles. That's topping. This is the solar cycle. That's topping. So I think Bitcoin's going to have a lot of issues here through December. And I, and I do expect uh, Bitcoin to move in sympathy with the S&P. So again, I, this is why I tell everybody, watch the weekend. Be careful because you know if you look at Bitcoin, if you look at these statistics on Bitcoin, uh, Bitcoin has the same pattern as S&P. Look at the worst day of the week. It's Monday. You see that? So there's a five. That means it's the worst day. So be careful with long trades over the weekend and always check on Bitcoin. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. Thanks, Larry. Thank you, TFNN. Have a great day, everybody. I'll talk to you soon.